Energy Medicine, Wikipedia Article Audio Energy Medicine, Energy Therapy, Energy Healing, or Spiritual Healing are branches of alternative medicine based on a pseudoscientific belief that healers can channel healing energy into a patient and effect positive results. This idea itself contains several methods, hands-on, hands-off, and distant where the patient and healer are in different locations. Many schools of energy healing exist using many names, for example, biofield energy healing, spiritual healing, contact healing, distant healing, qi du, therapeutic touch, reiki or qigong. History Classification Spiritual healing occurs largely in non-denominational and ecumenical contexts. Practitioners do not see traditional religious faith as a prerequisite for effecting cures. Faith healing, by contrast, takes place within a traditional religious context. While early reviews of the scientific literature on energy healing were equivocal and recommended further research, more recent reviews have concluded that there is no evidence supporting clinical efficiency. The theoretical basis of healing has been criticized as implausible, research and reviews supportive of energy medicine have been faulted for containing methodological flaws and selection bias and positive therapeutic results have been dismissed as resulting from known psychological mechanisms. Edzard Ernst, formerly Professor of Complementary and Alternative Medicine at the University of Exeter, has warned that healing continues to be promoted despite the absence of biological plausibility or convincing clinical evidence, that these methods work therapeutically and plenty to demonstrate that they do not. Some claims of those purveying energy medicine devices are known to be fraudulent and their marketing practices have drawn law enforcement action in the U.S. There is a history of association or exploitation of scientific inventions by individuals claiming that newly discovered science could help people to heal. In the 19th century, electricity and magnetism were in the borderlands of science and electrical quackery was rife. These concepts continue to inspire writers in the New Age movement. In the early 20th century health claims for radioactive materials put lives at risk, and recently quantum mechanics and grand unification theory have provided similar opportunities for commercial exploitation. Thousands of devices claiming to heal via putative or veritable energy are used worldwide. Many of them are illegal or dangerous and are marketed with false or unproven claims. Several of these devices have been banned. Reliance on spiritual and energetic healings is associated with serious harm or death when medical treatment is delayed or foregone. The term energy medicine has been in general use since the founding of the non-profit International Society for the Study of Subtle Energies and Energy Medicine in the 1980s. Guides are available for practitioners, and other books aim to provide a theoretical basis and evidence for the practice. Energy medicine often proposes that imbalances in the body's energy field result in illness, and that by rebalancing the body's energy field health can be restored. Some modalities describe treatments as ridding the body of negative energies or blockages in mind, illness or episodes of ill health after a treatment are referred to as a release or letting go of a contraction in the body-mind. Usually, a practitioner will then recommend further treatments for complete healing. Beliefs the US-based National Center for Complementary and Integrative Health distinguishes between healthcare involving scientifically observable energy, which it calls veritable energy medicine, and healthcare methods that invoke physically undetectable or unverifiable energies, which it calls putative energy medicine. 
Polarity therapy founded by Randolph Stone is a kind of energy medicine based on the belief that a person's health is subject to positive and negative charges in their electromagnetic field. It has been promoted as capable of curing a number of human ailments ranging from muscular tightness to cancer, however, according to the American Cancer Society available scientific evidence does not support claims that polarity therapy is effective in treating cancer or any other disease. Scientific Investigations Energy healing relies on a belief in the ability of a practitioner to channel healing energy into the person seeking help by different methods, hands-on, hands-off, and distant where the patient and healer are in different locations. The Brockhampton Guide to Spiritual Healing describes contact healing in terms of transfer of healing energy and distant healing based on visualizing the patient in perfect health. Practitioners say that this healing energy is sometimes perceived by the therapist as a feeling of heat. There are various schools of energy healing, including biofield energy healing, spiritual healing, contact healing, distant healing, therapeutic touch, Reiki, Qigong, and many others. Spiritual healing is largely non-denominational traditional religious faith is not seen as a prerequisite for effecting a cure. Faith healing, by contrast, takes place within a religious context. The Buddha is often quoted by practitioners of energy medicine, but he did not practice hands-on or off healing. Distant healing Energy healing techniques such as therapeutic touch have found recognition in the nursing profession. In 2005-2006, the North American Nursing Diagnosis Association approved the diagnosis of energy field disturbance in patients, reflective of what has been variously called a postmodern or anti-scientific approach to nursing care. This approach has been strongly criticized. Contact Healing Believers in these techniques have proposed quantum mystical invocations of non-locality to try to explain distant healing. They have also proposed that healers act as a channel passing on a kind of bioelectromagnetism which shares similarities to vitalistic pseudosciences such as argon or qi. Drew Letter remarked in a paper in the Journal of Alternative and Complementary Medicine that such ideas were attempts to make sense of, interpret, and explore psi and distant healing. And that such physics-based models are not presented as explanatory but rather as suggestive. Beverly Rubick, in an article in the same journal, justified her belief with references to biophysical systems theory, bioelectromagnetics, and chaos theory that provide her with a scientific foundation for the biofield. Writing in the Journal of Bodywork and Movement Therapies, James Oshman introduced the concept of healer-sourced electromagnetic fields which change in frequency. Oshman believes that healing energy derives from electromagnetic frequencies generated by a medical device, projected from the hands of the healer, or by electrons acting as antioxidants. Evidence Base Physicists and skeptics roundly criticize these explanations as pseudophysics a branch of pseudoscience which explains magical thinking by using irrelevant jargon from modern physics to exploit scientific illiteracy and to impress the unsophisticated. Indeed, even enthusiastic supporters of energy healing point out that there are only very tenuous theoretical foundations underlying healing. A systematic review of 23 trials of distant healing published in 2000 did not draw definitive conclusions because of the methodologic limitations of several studies. In 2001 the lead author of that study, Edzard Ernst, 
published a primer on complementary therapies in cancer care in which he explained that though about half of these trials suggested that healing is effective he cautioned that the evidence was highly conflicting and that methodological shortcomings prevented firm conclusions. He concluded that as long as it is not used as an alternative to effective therapies, spiritual healing should be virtually devoid of risks. A 2001 randomized clinical trial by the same group found no statistically significant difference on chronic pain between distance healers and simulated healers. A 2003 review by Ernst updating previous work concluded that more recent research had shifted the weight of evidence against the notion that distant healing is more than a placebo and that distant healing can be associated with adverse effects. Alternative Explanations for Positive Reports A 2001 randomized clinical trial randomly assigned 120 patients with chronic pain to either healers or simulated healers, but could not demonstrate efficacy for either distance or face-to-face -face healing. A systematic review in 2008 concluded that the evidence for a specific effect of spiritual healing on relieving neuropathic or neurologic pain was not convincing. In their 2008 book Trick or Treatment, Simon Singh and Edzard Ernst concluded that spiritual healing is biologically implausible and its effects rely on a placebo response. At best it may offer comfort. At worst it can result in charlatans taking money from patients with serious conditions who require urgent conventional medicine. Alternative medicine researcher Edzard Ernst has argued that although an initial review of pre-1999 distant healing trials had highlighted 57% of trials as showing positive results, Later reviews of non-randomist and randomist clinical trials conducted between 2000 and 2002 led to the conclusion that the majority of the rigorous trials do not support the hypothesis that distant healing has specific therapeutic effects. Ernst described the evidence base for healing practices to be increasingly negative. Ernst also warned that many of the reviews were under suspicion for fabricated data, lack of transparency, and scientific misconduct. He concluded that spiritual healing continues to be promoted despite the absence of biological plausibility or convincing clinical evidence, that these methods work therapeutically and plenty to demonstrate that they do not. A 2014 study of energy healing for colorectal cancer patients showed no improvement in quality of life, depressive symptoms, mood, or sleep quality. There are several, primarily psychological, explanations for positive reports after energy therapy, including placebo effects, spontaneous remission, and cognitive dissonance. A 2009 review found that the small successes reported for two therapies collectively marketed as energy psychology are potentially attributable to well-known cognitive and behavioral techniques that are included with the energy manipulation. The report concluded that psychologists and researchers should be wary of using such techniques and make efforts to inform the public about the ill effects of therapies that advertise miraculous claims. There are primarily two explanations for anecdotes of cures or improvements, relieving any need to appeal to the supernatural. The first is post hoc ergo proter hoc, meaning that a genuine improvement or spontaneous remission may have been experienced coincidental with but independent from anything the healer or patient did or said. These patients would have improved just as well even had they done nothing. The second is the placebo effect, through which a person may experience genuine pain relief and other symptomatic alleviation. In this case, the patient genuinely has been helped by the healer not through any mysterious or numinous function, but by the power of their own belief that they would be healed. In both cases the patient may experience a real reduction in symptoms, 
though in neither case has anything miraculous or inexplicable occurred. Both cases, are strictly limited to the body's natural abilities. Positive findings from research studies can also result from such psychological mechanisms, or as a result of experimenter bias, methodological flaws such as lack of blinding, or publication bias. Positive reviews of the scientific literature may show selection bias, in that they omit key studies that do not agree with the author's position. All of these factors must be considered when evaluating claims. Bioresonance Therapy Bioresonance therapy is a pseudoscientific medical practice in which it is proposed that electromagnetic waves can be used to diagnose and treat human illness. History and Method Bioresonance therapy was invented in Germany in 1977 by Franz Morel and his son-in-law, engineer Eric Rask. Initially they marketed it as Mora therapy, for Morel and Rask. Some of the machines contain an electronic circuit measuring skin resistance, akin to the E-meter used by Scientology which the bioresonance creators sought to improve, Franz Morel had links with Scientology. Types of veritable energy medicine include magnet therapy, color puncture, and light therapy. Medical techniques involving the use electromagnetic radiation are not considered energy medicine in the terms of alternative medicine, Types of putative energy medicine include biofield energy healing therapies where the hands are claimed to direct or modulate energies which are believed to affect healing in the patient, this includes spiritual healing and psychic healing, therapeutic touch, healing touch, hands of light, esoteric healing, magnetic healing, qigong healing, reiki, pranic healing, crystal healing, distant healing, intercessory prayer, and similar modalities. Concepts such as chi, prana, innate intelligence, mana, pneuma, vital fluid, otic force, and argon are among the many terms that have been used to describe these putative energy fields. This category does not include acupuncture, Ayurvedic medicine, chiropractic, and other modalities where a physical intervention is used to manipulate a putative energy. Practitioners claim to be able to detect a variety of diseases and addictions. Some practitioners also claim they can treat diseases using this therapy without drugs, by stimulating a change of bioresonance in the cells and reversing the change caused by the disease. The devices would need to be able to isolate and pinpoint pathogens' responses from the mixture of responses the device receives via the electrodes. Transmitting these transformed signals over the same electrodes is claimed by practitioners to generate healing signals that have the curative effect. One placebo-controlled study of the effects of bioresonance therapy showed that Mora bioresonance therapy can markedly improve non-organic gastrointestinal complaints. This research study, however, was conducted with a relatively small sample size of 20 people and published by a journal that exclusively publishes alternative medicine procedures. The bioresonance diagnosis was complemented by the practitioner's dietary suggestions, making for an uncontrolled experiment with no analytical methods. The only measuring methods present were the subjective analysis of the practitioner pre- and post-diagnosis. Lacking any scientific explanation of how bioresonance therapy might work, Researchers have classified bioresonance therapy as pseudoscience. Some scientific studies did not show effects above that of the placebo effect. Effectiveness Scientific Criticism WebMD states, there is no reliable scientific evidence that bioresonance is an accurate indicator of medical conditions or disease or an effective treatment for any condition. 
proven cases of online fraud have occurred, with a practitioner making false claims that he had the ability to cure cancer, and that his clients did not need to follow the chemotherapy or surgery recommended by medical doctors, which can be life-saving. Ben Goldacre ridiculed the BBC when it reported as fact a clinic's claim that the treatment had the ability to stop 70% of clients smoking, a better result than any conventional therapy. In the United States of America the U.S. Food and Drug Administration classifies devices that use resistance measurements to diagnose and treat various diseases as Class 3 devices which require FDA approval prior to marketing. The FDA has banned some of these devices from the U.S. market, and has prosecuted many sellers of electrical devices for making false claims of health benefits. According to Quack Watch the therapy is completely senseless and the proposed mechanism of action impossible. On Bioresonance Therapy